All right, folks, we have another bare bones episode for you. This time it's Reactor Craft. So, what is Reactor Craft, first of all? Well, Reactor Craft is a mod that adds nuclear reactors to generate power. And that's about it. Its sole purpose is to provide lots and lots of power for whatever you need. So, there's a couple different kinds of reactors within Reactor Craft. As such, there is an actively cooled reactor. So in an actively cooled reactor, water will flow into it. It will then boil that water into steam, and then the steam gets piped off to some turbines. A passive cooled reactor doesn't use any water or steam, and therefore is passively cooled by the environment. So the most efficient reactors are obviously going to be the actively cooled ones, because they can produce more power with the amount of heat that they're generating which is where these big old turbines come in. So this little reactor, which, mind you, is not even all the way used, only four of these control rods are not inserted, is powering twin turbines producing about 27,000 RF a tick. And when you're producing, oh, what is that? Something like just a little under 56,000 RF a tick at a cost of about point one millibuckets, which is literally point one thousandth of a ingot per tick, it's quite it's quite efficient. It's very efficient. So really these reactors don't need a ton of fuel at all, and most of the time you can mine the eulorium that you need. So let's look at the interface really quick. So there's a couple things here. Here is the core temperature, the hot fluid output, the fuel burn up, and the fuel reactivity. So first of all, core temperature is how hot the core is. The higher that number, the faster it's going to burn through fuel. This number is directly proportional to the casing heat. So this reactor is actively cooled by fluids such as water, which is superheated by the core. Well, it doesn't really affect the core directly. The core has to go to the case where the water is being heated up. And then the fuel burn up rate is at which the rate is used. And the fuel reactivity, how heavily aerated the core is. The higher the number is, the less fuel burn up there is. And then there's the core fuel stats which shows all the fuel in there. And then there's the case heat, which is where most of the power comes from. And then there's the core heat again, as well as the charge. Then there is the water input and the water output. Pretty self-explanatory. In a passive reactor, you really want these two as close as you can. You really want them as close as you can regardless, but especially in a passive reactor. So how do we get those numbers to change? Well, we can change the configuration. So currently, we just have a 2x3 column of fuel cells right here. And these are what they look like. Now, if you put these fuel cells next to each other, this increases the reactivity and reduces fuel burn up. However, if you have too many together, it can actually cause the heat to not be properly distributed, in which case you will need to fill it with a liquid. So the best liquid to fill it up with is gelid cryotheum. So what we can do is we can literally just break down some of this, fill it up, slap this button, and then we notice that we're s that we're producing about the same of everything. However, the core heat and the casing heat are much closer together. Meaning, we're burning less fuel, but it's more efficient. And you can fill it with all sorts of other liquids like water, redstone, and enderium, or resonant ender if you want to call it that way. So this is kind of an interesting setup. Now we can obviously take this a bit further and show you a passive reactor. Now passive reactors don't use turbines. They simply just, they don't use them. So their main priority is really just producing some power just as a side note. 
typically you're going to build a passive reactor if you are not needing a ton of power. Say for, let's say you put a, I don't know, a digital miner in the nether. That would be a perfect use case scenario. So we just build it like so, stick that in there, like that, and then we get some more cryothium. we just stick up like that and there's obviously the snow and then we get some eulorium which is the main fuel now reactor these reactors will run off of uranium as well so there's no real worries so as you can see here just from this small little tiny reactor we are producing pretty much the same on the casing and the core heat and our Reactor is only, only burning through about 0.1 millibuckets per tick. However, as we can see before, even though this thing is only burning through 0.1 millibuckets per tick, it's effectively generating 56,000 RF a tick, whereas this guy is only producing 1.4. We can also note that the fuel reactivity is effectively 100%, meaning there's no effect. However, if we were to change that, say by, oh dear, by doing this, oop, oop, we effectively still have the same number of fuel cells, however, our fuel reactivity has gone up and our fuel consumption has gone down, whereas everything else has been the same. So there's a lot of cool tricks that you can employ here. You can make certain groups that increase the fuel reactivity and decrease the fuel output, but you want to make sure that what you're gaining in the radiation, you're not losing in the core heat. Now, there is one important note. The radiation travels only in cardinal directions, so it doesn't do diagonals, but it'll only go in straight lines. And another thing is the turbines themselves. There's a lot of things that denote what a turbine does. So within the turbine, if we want to open this bad boy up, we can see that there's turbine rotors and turbine blades. Now a turbine blade can only handle 25 millibuckets of steam per tick, so it is important that you don't try to shove more steam in there than it can accept. Currently turbines only accept 2,000 millibuckets per tick. So, if you take 2,000 divided by 25, you get 80, meaning the max number of rotor blades that would be effective would be 80, which is exactly what we have here. And then, where the power comes from is the coil, or also known as the donut over the rotor. So, Ludocrite, I believe, is the best at this point, and will provide power. The more coils you have, the more resistance, meaning the slower your turbines will spin, but if you have tons and tons of blades, it doesn't matter. So this is one of the most effective setups I've found so far. But we're not going to go too much into that because, well, this is just a bare bones episode. So anyways, that's kind of a brief overview. You can have Reactor Craft installed into vanilla Minecraft and everything will work as it should. However, there really wouldn't be a point. Which is kind of different to what Nuclear Craft is. Nuclear Craft, there is somewhat of a point even in vanilla Minecraft. You can experiment. With this, there's literally only one type of fuel you can use, and that's Eulorium, or maybe the Plutonium that you get later, which is effectively, well, Plutonium. Anyways, uh, hopefully you enjoyed that and you actually learned a little bit something, and remember, it's your choice to be offended.